Okay, Stephen. Package has arrived. I went ahead and just removed your label um, to keep that information between us, of course. So let's go ahead and get things opened up and we're going to have a look at what you sent. interesting stories I think behind these watches um, I believe that one one was your dad's and one was potentially a replacement that you had gotten and now you have two <laughs> once you found your dad's so cool two six three oh nines whoops a little too much okay all right, well, uh, now that we have them here in front, let's take a really close look. All right, what do we have? What do we have? Let's do some investigating. All right, we're going to take a look at both, of course. Let's start with this one. This one intrigues me. We'll come back to this one. All right, <clears throat> well, this one has seen a life on the wrist. Wow. That is so cool. What's really neat is to see a watch that has been, in a sense, you know, worn to a nub. I mean, wow, look at that. Look at that. Look at all of that life. <laughs> That's the way I think about it, you know? I mean, this had been ground on and ground on. This didn't happen in one, one day. Um, at least I don't think it happened in one day. But look at the dial and hands. It's amazing to me that, that you get a watch where it's been worn to the point of, you know, almost not recognizing the bezel, but yet on the inside, it's still fresh and good. Name engraved on the back, that's kind of cool too. I think that's uh, <laughs> definitely the, the signifying mark that this is your, your dad's watch. Um, I am going to uh, perhaps cover that up just to kind of keep your anonymity here. Um, give me one second. Okay, I just wanted to put a little something over that to um, ensure that what's here is between us. So this is a 1983, March 83, 6309, 7049, and it should have the longer text on the bottom. 6309704 XT movement and dial Japan cased Hong Kong. So this is a Hong Kong when Sua shifted to Hong Kong um, they took the Japan off the back of the case and that was in the early 80s of course and let's see what your other watch is here yeah so that's perhaps even later, in fact. So that's a, a really late one. Whoa. Wow. Okay, so interesting. Okay, well, we'll have to talk about this one. Got some things to, things to discuss. Um, anyway, um, so to your dad's watch. Which I'm, I'm sort of thinking that's, that's what the identity of this one is. All right, so your crown screws down just fine. That seems to work. Everything is in good working order. Day and date. English Spanish wheel. Everything clicks over just as it should. Okay, so cosmetically, you know, we, we know where we're starting. We got a watch that has seen a life uh, on the wrist and has definitely taken its licks um, but has remained a very good case and a very a nice finish excuse me for one second we've got a movie going on okay while well, we have a little bit of quiet <laughs> keep going sorry that's what happens on the weekends um, okay so it looks like this one's in a good starting point I'd like to look at the movement just to have a have a quick peek so that's going to require a little bit uh, of off-camera work um, so give me just a second. Okay, see. Well, let's go ahead and finish this process of getting the case back off, and we're gonna have a look 
inside together. All right, so I see a service mark. This is from, if this is correct, 10 12 2016. J. Jose somebody. Rargol? Rargolf? I'm not sure. Anyway, signed his name pretty uh, nicely. Um, all right, well, let's take a look at Jose's handiwork. Um, so, I guess, you know, six years ago, this was in somebody's hands. Ooh. Ay, ay, ay. All right, so we've got some news about... Hold on one, one. Okay, I think we can... Okay. Um, let's see. Um, i got some news here. First thing that I see is... Um, your hairspring is completely roasted here. It's uh, apparently, and I'm not sure, I can't speak for what actually happened, but this actually moves to adjust the time. So in a plus or minus, you know, number of seconds a day, that's controlled by this arm. This controls your beat err. So when I'm making adjustments to watches uh, in my videos, I'm usually adjusting these two things. I don't know if you can see your hairspring, but it's supposed to be straight between these two posts. Yours has a huge kink in it, which means that your hairspring is done for, unfortunately. I don't know how that happened. Apparently somebody tried to work out some time and boom, Totally tweaked your hairspring. So you're in for a hairspring for sure. And uh, that's, you know, it's not a, not a simple thing, but we'll go ahead and get that taken care of. I got plenty of them in stock. Uh, your arbor quartz are clearly toast. Um, that is rocking, rocking like crazy. Excuse me for a second. This movie is really loud. Sorry for all the interruptions. Anyway. It's a little hard to test um, at this point, so we're gonna just close this one back up um, and move on to your other watch. So you're definitely in store for some some parts. Um, not sure what else Jose got into <laughs> with that watch. Okay, so now on to your other watch. Um, this is an interesting one. This is really late. So this is from seven or eighty six actually five eighty six. Um, again, a six three zero nine. Um, what's interesting is that somebody took some liberties, uh, they, you know, you have a very nice insert, um, and that's original. You have what looked to be original hands, they're patinaed very nicely, but you have a replacement dial, and so it's an aftermarket dial, um, definitely, yeah, definitely aftermarket, and it's got a little damage as well, you've got some loss of the screen sort of pistachio loom here. Um, yeah, not the, not the cleanest. But we're gonna open this one up too and have a look at the movement, see where, we're, see where we're sitting on this one. So I don't know if you can see the differences. Let's try and get your dad's watch here. Um, they should have basically the same dial. This one says Japan, which is not correct. Um, it should have the small text like this if it's a late watch. Um, but you see the differences in color on the loom? That's for sure the telltale. And the fonts are wrong. Too big, too small, just odd. Um, I don't know if you knew that going in. If you did, no problem. But um, it certainly uh, has, has had the dial replaced. Okay, give me a moment. I'm going to take the case back off. Okay. Let's have a look. Ooh. All right. Well, ooh, uh, yeah. Ah, uh, oh no, one second. Okay, so here's what I, here's an interesting thing. I, I'm pretty sure this watch is kind of a, a bits of, bits of this and bits of that. Uh, a few things I noticed first off is that this winding weight is not from a diver. It's from a sort of, you know, Asian market um, uh, dress watch of some sort, which probably means that so is the movement. I, I presume, my presumption is that this entire setup was somehow damaged with water and they found a movement 
uh, out of a out of an old dress watch and probably uh, replaced it with that. I want to check your crown real quick. Okay, that's. Oops, I'm sorry. Uh, that's okay. You're missing your rest washer. Um, you're also missing your spring uh, that holds your your movement retaining ring in place. So that's this ring here. And to add some insult to injury, you also have a bad hairspring in this movement. Um, I don't know how this one's ever going to run in this sh shape. It is pretty whacked. Um, eh, yeah. So, you know, uh, I don't have a lot of confidence in this, in this particular movement. I want to show your hairspring here. You see where these two two things are way close together and you see this big bow here this should not look like that um, this watch has its troubles um, yeah I'm a, I'm a little concerned but the problem is is that these things are are particularly sensitive to water damage um, just unsure how that's gonna react uh, anyway okay so lots of pitting um, you know, this, this watch saw a lot of water ingress, uh, lots of rust and corrosion. That pitting, uh, doesn't allow your, your actual watch, which doesn't actually have any sort of gasket in it, <laughs> to, uh, keep water out. And without a gasket, of course, it's not keeping any water out. So you have a watch without a gasket and with a very pitted case, case back at least. Um, case itself isn't terrible, although you do have some pitting. Uh, in your case. I wish I had better news. Um, some of the parts on this watch are really good. Your case has been polished pretty hard. Um, yeah, I, you know, I'm not sure what you have invested in this watch in terms of the, you know, actual value. No, it's, it's, it's got some original parts. Some of them are, are pretty rough. Um, the, the bezel and the insert are quite good. That's, that's sort of nice to see. Um, well, Stephen, um, I wish I, I wish I had had great news to talk about. I can't really even test the running of these watches. Um, you know, for certain, we can make your dad's watch, um, you know, whatever you want it to be. Uh, we can service it. We can make it better. We can, you know. All those things that mechanically we can we can do whatever. I wouldn't touch it cosmetically. I think it's so cool to see your dad's watch in this sort of shape and know that it was worn and and you know utilized. Uh, this watch, mm, no, no. I look at this watch and I see a few parts. <laughs> I don't mean to be crass or or unkind, uh, but I don't really see a watch that um, that deems the kind of investment that it takes for me to make a watch great, um, at least mechanically, it's, it's always going to fall a little short in terms of the cosmetics and the originality. Um, that's my opinion. I, I don't know where you want to go, um, but I'll, I'll leave it to you. I'm going to send you this uh, video. We'll talk and uh, we'll proceed how you like. Okay. Thank you very much, Steve.